the pedal, pedal. I first met Lucy in the ball pool at Highbury School and I couldn't see anyone in the room at first and then I saw this little hand sticking out of the ball pool and someone said, oh, that's Lucy. So I put a little keyboard under the hand and the hand started playing rather mutinously, um, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. And I thought, here's a girl for whom music really is important and it could be a way of unlocking her language, her social skills, and above all, her enjoyment of life. Now, Lucy, we're going to learn Prelude in E by Bach. What's, which one's that? Lucy? Which one are you playing now? Prelude in D by Bach. Yeah, we're going to learn Prelude in E. Are you listening? Listen. Do you want to swap places or hold on? Hold on. OK. At first, the sessions were... So a lot of it was just me working out how to do it, you know, how I could make the most of her talent and how I could give her what she needs for her very special skills and to do that whilst dealing with all the learning difficulties. Yeah. Can you do it, Lucy? You try. Try to prelude in E by bar. <laughs> <laughs> do it. Should we do it beginning again? Listen, listen. I will usually start by just playing the whole piece for her. Years ago, when she first started, she couldn't listen to me play the piano for more than 10 seconds before she got impatient and would push my hands out of the way and, um, and uh, you know, and, and make sure that, I, that, it, that she was playing. Nowadays, I will play the entire piece to her and then I will ask Lucy to have a go and she will play what she remembers of the piece. should do the left hand. In terms of the structure of the lesson, we'll tend to work in roughly five minute sections and we'll tend to alternate between something that I'm trying to get her to do and then something which is in her head which she's dying to get out and to show me. Yeah. Now Lucy, Bill Evans? Yeah. Miles Taper. Is it Miles Taper? I think it's Bill Evans. Bill Evans. Sounds like Bill Evans. By Chopin. Yeah. Not in B flat minor. Wherever she is, whenever she hears music, she'll start to pick that up and she'll start trying to reproduce it herself. So she really is, like so many uh, children with, with autism, self directed. <laughs> You can't teach Lucy, you can only help her to learn. You can guide that journey. And her brain decides what it is she needs to learn next and she will do it. Yeah. Oh, you want me to do it? Oh, yeah, OK. Generally, Lucy will prefer to hear the whole texture from the beginning because that's a way in which she remembers the music. We do a little bit of work with the hands separately, um, you know, in the traditional way, because that has been a bit of a barrier for her because she can't see what thing's being played with the right hand and the left hand. So, for example, in uh, one of Lucy's favourite pieces is the variation from the Goldberg variation which goes etc 
and she plays it better than me. And um, th this piece where the, the left hand is jumping over the right hand, things like that, she, she loves it and she really wants to play it, but it took a long time for her to understand that this note is played by the left hand and not by the right hand. And it was only by um, physically, me physically picking her left hand up and going like that with it, um, that she sort of gradually learned that. Can you play it in Lucy? Listen, let's do All Blues by Miles Davis in G. Well done. You need to have a good read of the school's safeguarding policy. And if there's any kind of doubts or questions that you have about that, just ask the head of the school. And also, having a good relationship with the child's parents is really helpful. And making sure as much as possible that everybody involved in the child's development is aware of what you're doing. Now, Lucy, would you like to do some Bartok or would you like to do Prelude? Would you like to do... Listen, listen. Would you like to do some Bartok or would you like to do Prelude in E by Bach or would you like to do Night and Day? Prelude in D. In D. <gasps> Go on then. When she's learning something or if I want her to listen to something to correct it or listen to a new piece of music, I will give her the option. I'll say, would you like to hold on or would you like to swap places? So if we swap places, she'll listen and she'll usually say, listening, and then I'll play the piece. Just your fingers, do you want me to play? If, once she gets confident with the piece, she'll put her hand underneath my hand and then I will still be playing, but, but I will be sort of pressing her fingers down rather than her. So that's the next stage of getting to the piece. And then eventually, obviously, I let go completely and, and she, she plays. Well done. She's able to improvise and so she loves playing jazz. And, you know, she, she loves the rhythms of jazz and the kind of social interplay of that. Mr. Rabbit, Mr. Rabbit, your ears are just too long. Yeah, can you play the chords, Lucy? Can you play the chords again? Let's play the chords, you play. Here we go, one, two, three. Mr. Rabbit, Mr. Rabbit, your ears are so long. Lucy reacts to the music with her whole body, particularly her legs and her head. As a teacher, you want to encourage that physical response to the music, because that's how she responds to it, that's how she enjoys it. But on the other hand, in terms of her piano technique, we have to be careful that her energy is focused on her fingertips. And so, if her head's moving excessively, sometimes I'll just say to her, Lucy, try to keep your head still, or sometimes I'll put my hand on top of her head, or sometimes tickling the top of her head, just to give her that sort of sensory stimulus, which will help her to centre herself. Do you want me to do it? Daniel's skill as a teacher is knowing where Lucy's learning needs to go next and scaffolding that process. There's a sense in which no one can teach anyone anything. You can train people to do things. You can train someone to, to drive a car, for example. But what education is about is about learning, not teaching. And I think what special education experts like Daniel tell us is that I can't teach anyone anything, but I can help children learn. I can provide an environment, I can provide the emotional support, I can provide the physical support to enable Lucy to learn. And that's the magic of special education. Good. No, don't do the fugue. <laughs> it's time to finish, Lucy. 
Look at that. No, listen, listen.